In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome, everyone, to Our Lady of Las Vegas Church. This Sunday, we observe the fourth Sunday of the Lenten season, also known as Letare Sunday. Letare Sunday gives us that sense of uh, a little bit of joy as we know that we are drawing closer to our celebration of Christ's victory, Easter, which is only three weeks away. And so our Lenten journey is and continuing on, but we see that light at the end of the tunnel. We see the joy that we are heading for. But even though we will celebrate the resurrection, we must first go through our Good Friday. Jesus came into this world to suffer and die and then rise again and through his victory to give us the gift of salvation. We come here at this Mass to celebrate Jesus' passion, death, and resurrection, our participation in it that has given us our share in his victory. So as we prepare to come into communion with Christ, let us do so now humbling ourselves by asking God for his mercy and his forgiveness for all of our sins. I confess to To Almighty Almighty God God and and to you, my brothers and sisters, sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Joshua. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I have removed the reproach of Egypt from you. While the Israelites were encamped at Gilgah on the plains of Jericho, they celebrated the Passover on the evening of the 14th of the month. On the day after the Passover, they ate of the produce of the land in the form of unleavened cakes and parched grain. On that same day after the Passover, on which they ate of the produce of the land, the manna ceased. No longer was there manna for the Israelites, who that year ate of the yield of the land of Canaan. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Together extol his name. 
From the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. And all this is from God, who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and given us the ministry of reconciliation, namely, God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. So we are ambassadors for Christ, as if God were appealing through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin, who did not know sin so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus. But the Pharisees and the scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them Jesus addressed this parable. A man had two sons. And the younger son said to his father, Father, give me the share of your estate that should come to me. So the father divided the property between them. After a few days, the younger son collected all his belongings and set off to a distant country, where he squandered his inheritance on a life of dissipation. When he had freely spent everything, a severe famine struck that country, and he found himself in dire need. So he hired himself out to one of the local citizens who sent him to his farm to tend the swine. And he longed to eat his fill of the pods on which the swine fed, but nobody gave him any. Coming to his senses, he thought, how many of my father's hired workers have more than enough to eat, but here I am dying from hunger. I shall get up and go to my father, and I shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat one of your hired workers. So he got up and went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him, and he was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His father said to him, His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But his father ordered his servants quickly, Bring the finest robe and put it on him. Bring a ring and put it on his finger and sandals on his feet. Take the fattened calf and slaughter it. Let us celebrate with a feast because this son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost 
and has been found. Then the celebration began. Now the older son had been out in the field, and on his way back, he, as he neared the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked what this might mean. And the servant said to him, Your brother has returned, and your father has slaughtered the fattened calf, because he has him back safe and sound. Well, he became angry, and when he refused to enter the house, his father came out and pleaded with him. He said to his father in reply, Look, all these years I have served you, and not once did I disobey your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. But when your son returns who swallowed up your property with prostitutes, for him you slaughter the fattened calf. He said to his son, My son, you are here with me always, and everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice, because your brother was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As I said um, at the beginning of Mass today, this is Leitari Sunday, the fourth Sunday of Lent, kind of the counterpart of Gaudete Sunday, which is the third Sunday of, of Advent. And normally I would be wearing maybe a, a rose-colored vestment today, or allowable to do so. Um, but this is uh, the fourth Sunday of Lent, and, and, and it's, we're getting closer to uh, our celebration of the, of the Easter mystery, miracle, the resurrection of Jesus. Today, we're faced with a wonderful gospel. But before we get into it, I want to ask you the question. I have this this $20 bill here. It's real. And what is the difference between a nice, crisp $20 bill and a soiled, crumpled up $20 bill? Well, there was this preacher who showed his congregation this nice, crisp $20 bill. And he says to the congregation, he says, who would like this $20 bill? And everybody just raised their hands in the whole congregation. So he said, uh-huh, okay. So he crumpled up this $20 bill. And he said, now who wants it? And still everybody raised his hands. He said, uh-huh. So he threw the $20 bill on the ground, stepped on it, picked it up, and says, now who wants it? Still everybody in the church wanted it. And he said, interesting, interesting. And he explained to them that the difference between a new, crisp $20 bill and a soiled $20 bill in our eyes is the way that a good person and a bad person look in the eyes of God. Because they all have value, no matter matter what. Basically, both people, good and bad, stand equal in the sight of God since we've all sinned. And we all fall short of the glory of God, as St. Paul tells us in his letter to the Romans. Jesus presents us with this wonderful uh, parable today that we know as the prodigal son, and I'm sure you've heard this story many, many times. There was a man who had two sons, one who was, couldn't wait to break out of his father's home and just go out on his own, and the other one, well, probably kind of like a, 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 an angry kind of guy who, who may perhaps was jealous of his brother, who just was not appreciative of, of what he even had. Well, the younger one asks his father, as we hear in the story, for his share of the inheritance, and he takes all his money and goes out and just, just has a grand old time until his money's gone. Typical that you have a lot of friends around you when you, when you have money. But once he's that money is gone and has nothing. He found himself destitute with nothing. And to top it all off, a, a famine occurred where there was, there was nothing. He found a job working as a tender of the sheep, and or not sheep or the pigs, rather, and he wanted to eat the food that the pigs was eating. But then he came to his senses. He finally came to his senses. He swallowed his pride and realized the error of his way. And he 
he decided to go back to his father. But the interesting thing was, is that he didn't dare go back saying, here I am, father, take me back in. He realized what he had done. He knew that he had sinned. And most of all, not because he wasted his father's money, but he damaged his father's trust and his father's love that he had for him. And that was the thing that really hurt And so he knew if he would go back to his father that he wouldn't be able to take his place as a son, but he would rather just want to be treated as one of his hired hands, just so that at least he'd have food on the table and a roof over his head. And so he took a chance going back to his father. But he got the surprise of his life when he went back, and his father accepted him. In fact, his father was keeping vigil and waiting for him, saw him coming, ran to him, and just placed his arms around him and was so happy and grateful to have him back. He commanded that they bring him new clothes, put a ring on his finger, bring, kill the fatted calf. We have to celebrate with a feast. So much does God love us. Jesus is showing us how the Father is towards all of us, his children. We're all sinners. We all fall short of God's glory. But there go I before with the grace of God go I. So the son came back. The problem is now with the older son who never left, who stayed, who was always obedient, and who refused to go back into back into the house and celebrate. That his brother came back after wasting all that time and money, doing God knows what, and the father welcomes him back kills the fatted calf with this great celebration. He just couldn't take it. And when, even when the father came and pleaded with him, he refused, saying, boy, I, I've been with you, I've been loyal, I've been obedient, and you never gave me anything to celebrate with my friends. And the father is like looking at him going, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? You're with me all the time. Everything I have is yours. If you don't see that, and if you don't appreciate it, that is your problem. And truly, it was the son's problem. He didn't appreciate all that he had, all that he was, all the whole time. But he may have been jealous of his brother who, who went out and had fun. Maybe he wanted to do that himself. Who knows? But there's two categories of people. One who go out and who realize the error of their way, come back and ask for forgiveness in Jesus, showing us that God does forgive. But we have to come to our senses. We have to realize our sin, confess it, and receive God's mercy and forgiveness. But then there are those, like the older sibling, who think they're justified, think they're uh, uh, okay, but who are inside angry and upset and who can't even appreciate the blessings and the gifts that God gives to them. And when it comes time to celebrate good things, they can't even do that. And that's very, very sad. Jesus never tells us if the older son goes into the party to celebrate. And perhaps he did that purposely because he let us end that story. So the question is, how would you end that story? If you were that older son, would you be able to swallow your pride? Would you be able to simmer down your anger and upset? Would you be able to go in to celebrate your brother's coming back? Good question. And this is how we have to leave it for now. But just think about that. And when you do, end that parable. And hopefully, hopefully you will end it in a way that you would be able to celebrate your brother's return as the Father who represents our merciful God does. Please join me now as as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. 
for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We bring our needs before God our Father, who, like the Father in Jesus' parable, tells us that everything I have is yours. We come to the Father who is generous and merciful as we bring to him our prayers. For the church, that we may extend to our neighbors the mercy we know in the Lord with generosity and compassion and without judgment or condensation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That food and fresh water may be shared equitably around the globe, enabling all people to enjoy the fruits of the earth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. For those who have turned away from family or faith, that they may find the courage to turn back and that they may find mercy and love in return, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of Ukraine, especially the children, who have been so badly hurt in so many ways by the invasion into their country, and for all who have lost their lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those preparing for the Easter sacraments, that they may know God's love and mercy for the rest of their lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those celebrating the sacrament of reconciliation, that in reconciling with God and with the community, they may be a sign of God's healing mercy in our midst, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all the names and intentions enrolled our, in our community book of prayer, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For those who have gone before us in faith, that they may be brought into the peace of God's presence with all their sins forgiven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the repose of the soul of Father Philip O'Donnell, from whom this Mass is offered, and for our own private intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. O oh, merciful God, we come to you, to you with remorse, looking to you for forgiveness and help. Grant the prayers we make today through the one who brought reconciliation to the world, your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Please pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord and accept, accept the sacrifice at your hand, for the praise and glory of his name, for all good and all of his holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, Jesus has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, Father, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song of in adoration, and we, with all the host of angels and saints, cry out and without end now acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and you are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George Leo, our Bishop, Gregory, our Auxiliary Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Remember your servant, Father Philip O'Donnell, and all who have died in your mercy. Father, welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her beloved spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you, Father, throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And now at our Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, together let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and the glory are yours now and forever. O Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Lord, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer each other now a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called now to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for celebrating this Mass with us today on this Laetare Sunday, this fourth Sunday of Lent. Thank you to all of our ministers who assisted at Mass today, Teresa, our lector, and Mikhail, the one who controls our cameras, and of course our music ministry, Eva and David. Thank you so very much for, for lifting us up in music. Please remember that uh, we are praying constantly for peace. This past Friday, the Holy Father consecrated Russia and uh, the Ukraine to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. But it's not just the words of consecration, it also has to be in our hearts. We have to follow through with our actions, with our, our faith, with our, with our prayers. We have to be true and faithful. We have to follow Christ, who is the Prince of Peace and who brings that into the world. But it only will be there if we do our part to help bring it about as well. So we continue to pray. Before we conclude, I'd like to have you join in with me in this prayer for Ukraine, asking God to bring an end to this war, all the atrocities that are going on in the Ukraine and are affecting so many people, not just in the Ukraine, but in other countries as well. We pray for all the countries who are helping and, and uh, providing aid to the refugees and, um, and just pray that we continue to move forward and finally bring this unrest finally to its end. So please join me in this prayer. The words will be on the screen. O oh, loving God, we pray for the people of Ukraine, for all those suffering or afraid, that you will clo be close to them and protect them. We pray for the world leaders, for compassion, strength, and wisdom to guide their choices. We pray for the world that in this moment of crisis, we may reach out in solidarity to our brothers and sisters in need. May we walk in your ways so that peace and justice become a reality for the people of Ukraine and for all the world. Amen. I'd like to extend to those of you who are celebrating something special in your life, your birthday, anniversary, or anything, uh, our best wishes. And of course, all, as always, if you are dealing with something more serious and something way heavy on your heart and soul, Please know that our prayers do go with you. And please remember, let's pray for one another because prayer is power in our lives and something to always lift us up. And the Lord is always indeed with us. And so as we go forth and walk with the Lord this fourth week of Lent, let us do so with God's grace and blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This Mass is now ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.